Welcome to ETK Suit Series. We have with us Anuaga, who is an illustrious uh, businesswoman of this country. And more than that, she is an illustrious daughter of this country. And in her uh, rich uh, corporate career, uh, spanning almost about 70 plus years, I think what she has left is not just her uh, corporate legacy, but also the social legacy that uh, all of us admire and want to take it forward. And we would like to catch up with her on two important things. One is, how is it like leading a, a, a global company? In a true sense, Thermax having its presence in many countries, uh, 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 how is it you know, leading a global company? That's one. And the second one that we would also like to catch up with her is on, what is it like leave, uh, leaving a social legacy uh, after having uh, led the company from the highest echelons. Welcome to ETK's uh, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, uh, for, and uh, we're really honored to have you and we thought uh, we should catch up with you in, uh, in the perspective of two things, like I said. One is in terms of, you know, those days, uh, I'm sure having uh, been the alumni of some of two illustrious institutions again, one is uh, the St. Xavier's in those days and uh, TASS also. And then having led this wonderful company from 1997 to 2014, if I'm right. So how is it like leading uh, and uh, to quote unquote, the woman leading a, a global company? Okay. Uh, since you mentioned, by training, I'm a social worker. Yes. But destiny took me to the corporate world. My husband, when he was in his late 40s, had a massive heart attack. And we had to go to the UK for a bypass because his heart was pretty damaged. And on the second day, he had a stroke. And this brilliant man couldn't recognize me, didn't know A, B, C, D, one, two, three, four. And he got back everything through his determination and uh, just hard work. But when we returned to India, well-wishers suggested I take some interest in the company, which was a private limited company. Though my husband headed it, and he's part of the family, uh, I think he headed it because he was the best. So I would like to believe we've had a professionally managed uh, company. And the only place where I felt I had a place to enter was in the human resource. So I worked under a wonderful head called Mr. Prasad Kumar, who nurtured me, helped me. Five years later, when Mr. Kumar wanted to be on his own, he suggested that I was ready to be the head. So within the company, people had known me for many years. So after my husband's death, on the second day, the board met and decided that I should be the executive chairperson. Uh, as I said, being from the HR background, I had a high uh, ex uh, acceptance from within the company. Uh, from the outside world, I was very active in CII. And I must say, they just went out of their way to help me to be successful. And I've never found anyone not accepting me just because I was a woman in India, abroad, within the company or outside. I think if you do not have arrogance and when you don't know something, which was plenty in my case, you honestly say, I don't know and get the answers. You have to have the answers, but you don't pretend that you know everything. If you made a mistake, you say, I'm sorry. So if you reach out to people and not have airs, I don't think people would make gender an issue. Sure. That's my experience. Exactly. So, you know, those days, ma'am, I think uh, that's the time when I think we, uh, you know, we just got started off with our so-called LPG, liberalization. We we're talking about mid-1990s, that's what we we're looking at it. So, were there any challenges? One is that, of course, forget about uh, the gender part of it, because I'm sure since I think more than respect, I know, accepted, I think you're respected, and that's how the entire yeah. accommodative spirit has come in. Yeah. But w did you find, uh, what are you putting up for yourself? W because you're coming from HR, so you look at it from a uh, different perspective. But again, business requires you to, or you must have required you to look at uh, the, a different spectrum altogether. Yeah. So from that perspective, w was there any challenge yeah. or dichotomy as such? Yeah. Liberalization had started 
when my husband was alive. Uh, I had two things to deal with. One is my own internal battles. I didn't want to head this organization. I felt very inadequate. I felt I wasn't really equipped because I had stuck to the softer aspects of HR mm -hmm. and not learned hardcore business. I'm not good at finance. So I felt the only reason this responsibility was given to me because we owned 62% shares. So I kept devaluing myself. And to make matters worse, I kept comparing myself with my late husband <laughs> and saying he was such a wonderful, charismatic person and where am I? But I must say, having decided to go for a Vipassana program, gave me ample opportunity for 10 days to go inwards. Because as you know, you cannot read, write, mm. or talk to people. So you get into introspection. introspection. And I realize that it's no use comparing myself with my husband. I can never be Rointanaga. But can I be in touch with my unique strengths and offer them what any organization or any place can expect is the best out of you. You give out your best. So I will say I got some confidence. And another thing that was very challenging in the environment was economy was going through a downturn, our Indian economy. And Thermax was not doing well at all. So just to give you an idea, our 400 rupees share was quoted at 36. Wow. So that was a huge challenge that how do I turn around a business, the technical side of it, which I was unfamiliar. So I suggested that we should hire a consultant. And all my senior executives were male and they said, no, there's no need. <laughs> we are very confident that when the economy turns, turns we will also do well. And the consultant will ask for huge fees. And at a time when we are not making profits, we cannot afford to pay them. But I honestly think the reason why they didn't want a consultant, for actually two reasons. One thing, they were not disciplined enough to follow what the consultant says. You can defer, of oh. course you can defer. Right. But once having agreed, they have to follow it. And secondly, I know you are all four males in this room, it comes in the way of your macho, if, macho image oh, to ask for help. Oh. I always say, if I lose my way, I stop the car, ask someone. Exactly. Men won't ask. They'll make blunders but want to find on their own. So anyway, I convinced the board that we were out of depth and we needed to have the consultants. So we engaged Boston Consultancy. Oh. And uh, fortunately, the chairperson I knew from Pune days, he was with Telco, so I knew Arun Myra. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a wonderful set of people working with us. We worked very hard. My executives worked very hard. I remember there were times when we were up till 12 and again meeting at 6 in the morning or 7 in the morning. So those were tough days. So what tough of some of your executives oh no, were huh? they intimidated you know, because they must have been no, quote unquote investigating kind of thing. They no, must have asked a lot of questions. Yeah, one of, th I'll, we did uh, with their suggestion, as I said, everything we debated. Mm. I didn't want anything to be blindly followed. It may not suit us. Exactly. For example, we came out of businesses which were not our core competency. We had got into bottled water, paint boots, into many other things which added to our top line but eroded our bottom line. Oh. So that means asking people to leave. Something we had never done in Thermax. In Thermax, we believe that in India there's no safety net. So as long as we are doing well, we could tolerate a few non-performers. So if someone had done any hiraferi, we would ask him to leave. 
but not on performance so far. But that culture had to change. We had to bring in performance culture. We had to bring focus on customers and innovation. When you are doing well, you can afford to make mistakes because innovation means you will make mistakes. But when you are not doing well, you come heavily on any mistakes. So people said, like a government organization, sambal ke kaam kara. Don't. Uh, <laughs> yeah, all yeah. the time. So that fright was in the fear was in the system. So we had to encourage innovation, make mistakes. That was our strength. That's how we grew. So we had to come out of many uh, businesses. In the businesses which we stayed, we need to streamline and bring in efficiency. Then something we did, which I'm not aware of many Indian companies doing, we reconstituted the entire board. In those days... So it uh, must have been too ahead of a time. Yeah, yeah, sorry, but you know, a year before my husband had died, I forgot to tell you, we had gone public. Okay. So I felt that we just can't be inward focused and do what's comfortable for us. We have responsibility towards about 25% of shareholders who are holding our shares. So uh, we reconstituted the board. We had nine executive board members. In the olden days, when we were private limited, whoever did a good job, we sort of encouraged them by inviting them on the board. So we had nine executive uh, board members and four independent board members. Okay. Now, if you have nine executive board members, their voice can be very loud mm -hmm. and the independent board members' voice can be a little... Yeah. Uh, they can be sound. So, uh, yeah, yeah, drowned, yeah. I would say. Also, when you are doing well, it's fine to have this. But when you are not doing well, to sit on the board and evaluate your own performance objectively is very difficult for most people. So they would come up with excuses and reasons why they hadn't done well. So we decided that our family also, starting with us, should be either on the board or on the be executives. You can't be both. So by then, I was almost retiring, almost, I had a few years, but I gave a choice to my daughter who is a chemical engineer, she's done a master's from Imperial College wow. and had run businesses and my son-in-law was very, who's done his MBA and who's very active in the international business to make a choice. Either they could join the board or they could continue in the business. They were pretty upset. I mean, what kind of a choice is this? And that also from my mother and mother-in-law. But I was very firm and they chose to be on the board. And today they also think it's the wisest decision we've made because whatever we own, it's all in Thermex. Right. So it's in our own self-interest that it's managed not by the family because we own it, but by the person who's most capable of running it. Right. So that's a wise decision. So we made many dramatic changes. There were a few instances where after debating internally, we did not agree with the consulting company. And didn't, for example, there were two businesses, they said, has no future. But my people really felt it had a future. So we carried, kept them. And I'm glad we, I listened to my inner people also. But I think my o own people will say it was a very wise decision and Thermax came out and we did started doing very well. Uh, Ma'am, in this, you know, it's a fantastic journey that you know, you have gone through, but you know, one is that you know, you have, you know, you have to have the right professionals to run such a very big mandate kind of thing, because now you're taking a back seat consciously so you must be looking at some very you know, great professionals with a pedigree or whatever you call it so what kind of criteria were you using because you also coming from HR background yeah. and you know the people yeah. management skills and sure. th kind of thing so uh, wh what kind of things yeah. were you looking at them uh, by and large so far we have tried to have the head internally okay not from outside I mean that's not a hundred percent rule or anything exactly. 
if we need to, but I think an internal person Who's, and knows to our values, our culture, our people, and has the domain knowledge also. So as far as possible, we start looking at grooming someone from within. We, so far we have succeeded. So uh, we chose people from within the company and uh, there have been two MDs since I retired and both have been very successful. My daughter is the non-executive chairperson and she takes a lot of interest in the company because uh, she is an engineer. They have good equation with my MD. You know, uh, ours is an unusual combination mm -hmm. where the senior executives down the line, people are very fond of the family. They want the family to take an interest. So having decided not to interfere on a day-to-day -day basis, we take a macro view, future strategy. For example, being in boilers, ours is all fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. But my daughter is very keen we should become green. So she's encouraging many things like solar, many other uh, all things. So there are many strategic long-term things where my son-in-law and my daughter are able to add value. Yeah. So uh, right now, so the, those two people uh, you 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 know you had uh, being there. One uh, has retired, okay. and the other one is continuing. Yes. Sir. So, ma'am, let me ask you. Well, maybe it looks maybe a little blunt question, but let's say, at some point of time, ma'am, if we are faced, ma I mean, maybe you can let us know or e as a prescription also. Let's say, you know, you face a dilemma between a business and let's say something to do with the people. So which one would you go for? Because you, because it's always a dilemma, and there's no right or wrong answer at the moment. But then, from your point of view, and what is that people should definitely why for, and at least give a benefit of doubt, at least if not take a decision. You know, uh, I read a wonderful book called Built to Last, and Jim Collins. Uh, huh? and that said, we put this horrible word or. We have to look at the business and people, not right. or. Why? Because what is business if not people? True. Without people, business is not machines and some uh, figures and your money. It's the people who generate. So it's both. It's a blend of both. So I would never give this answer, it's one or the other. Exactly. If I don't know how to carry my people with me, I can't run a business. Sure. That's for sure. Now, mm. especially for someone like me, who is very unfamiliar with the business, Right. Yeah. Ma'am, now one is that you know the, uh, your priorities are in place, your value systems, your the culture, the philosophy, creative, whatever you make call it, it sound as if everything is in place. It's always a struggle. It's never sure that you know, easy. But yes, for us, values and cultures are, culture is very important. I mean, I can we can feel uh, that very important. For right. example, we always say it takes years to build a name. It takes one wrong act to spoil it. Mm -hmm. So please don't do it, is our strong message. We could do with less profit, even a loss, but our reputation is not to be ever tarnished. That's very important for us. Ma'am, in a hindsight, yeah. you know, as a, maybe as a, a gospel or at least as a philosophy to you know, a lot of people across the world, different in India, would you suggest that somebody who has to mantle this role of being a CEO, he or she should come preferably from HR background? No. So in that a, you understand no, in a different no, thing? No. no. I think he has to have an HR bent of mind, but being an engineering with very sophisticated technology, I think being an engineer does help a lot. So I would say being an engineer, but not an engineer can have a lot of HR leanings. Right. He's a people's man. So you need not be the head of HR, though our current MD, Mr. Umni Krishnan, did have a stint in HR uh, years ago. Very but good. we've stopped this rotation. Okay. But at that time, he was. Uh, so I don't think I would insist, but the values have to be very strong. That person has to be people-oriented, ethical. We don't want business at any cost. 
So we have certain norms written down, which means you let go certain businesses. You don't get your orders. Right. And as a professional, that's something very difficult because you want to get an order at any cost. <laughs> but that's not okay with us. Now, so, so one is running a professional, and it's wonderful to hear that, you know, we have, in fact, that is maybe after this meeting, definitely I want to see if there's any possibility of doing a case study because the way I look at, ma'am, is that this, in one sense, is a very interesting phenomenon of corporate governance in a family-run business. Sure. Now, fortunately, here it's family, it's not family-run business, it's just a family-owned, but then it's run by a professional company. Absolutely. So from that point of view, the family business kind of thing, now what, you know, maybe if you can share three or four, I would say gospels, that this is how we have to manage, because in, if you look at uh, uh, BAC uh, top 30 companies or 500 fortune Indian companies, you find majority of them are family owned in one sense. But then again, when it comes to the governance part of it, I think you can put them on a spectrum uh, sure. Uh, for sure. But then I think from your kind of background, especially from the value perspective, the culture, the legacy, and uh, the reputation part of it, so can you share with us maybe those three, four things that you think it must be there? It's like a gospel. In, in the company or in the CEO? Uh, in the company. So in whichever company. CEO comes in, they just follow it. Yeah. So it's yeah. something like an a, yeah. a unwritten yeah. code or a written code maybe. Yeah. Uh, in our vision statement for our company, we have said we are a globally respected company. And then it goes on for other things. But what does globally respected mean? Uh, I think, as I said, we will not take shortcuts, either to get a business or even, intra we do sometimes, in we sell to the customer by overstating. That does happen. Upscaling. But if we have done it, no. we will rectify right. and see that we don't fool the customer. At times it has happened, which we have done it, but finally see that we admit our mistake and do something right. So not be shortchange any of our stakeholders. And our stakeholders are our customers, our employees, our uh, society in which we will, our vendors, any, all other stakeholders. So we will not shortchange, knowingly, sometimes unknowingly, or down the line if someone has done it, we will rectify it. So that's not, that's. Another thing, we have to be technologically always Advanced. very very constant upgradation innovation otherwise you are not respected if yeah. you so you have to have a reasonably high turnover and uh, profit also you may have a spell of not doing well mm -hmm. but if you continuously not do well mm -hmm. who's going to respect you only for your ethics they so from ethics a bu business per perspective point of view mm -hmm. the innovation part is that so would you like to suggest something like maybe next three years let's say every year we must get like Jack Wills did, the thing. We twenty percent of our businesses have to just be able to get out so that there's an innovation possibility. Next year again. So there's a moving yeah. target as such so that the there's uh, a continuous you know, innovation. I've been out of the com company for eleven years, but I know there was a time when a large part of our business was through new products. Wow. They may not be exactly new, but some changes in the, exactly. so we are one up on the competitor. Mm -hmm. So it may not be completely a new product, but some innovation in within that product. Today, I'm sure the same thing is there, but exactly what is the target, I don't know. Sure. So one, you know, coming back to our question on family. Yeah. And so values family. Vision, uh, and yeah. vision and uh, see, being fair to all stakeholders to me is important. He may, my MD may give me a huge, huge profit <laughs> and my dividend will be huge. But if I find people are talking badly about us, we've tarnished, I don't want that, you know. Mm. God has given us enough now. Mm. So, but I have to make profit, I have other shareholders. Right. I'm not the only one. Now I'm public limited, so mm. I will push them, certainly. I won't now, sure. but they come, I mean, I, I hope my daughter will, <laughs> you know, and I know she does. Right. So that's one thing, having genuinely independent directors. Okay. We've gone out of our way to not have yes men, 
but people who, who will tell us what's good for our company, which in turn is always good for the family. Not what's good for the family, but good for the company, because in the long run, if the company does well, we will do well. Exactly. So we have taken really wonderful people who many companies may not be able to tolerate because they speak their mind. Mm. But we respect that. So always genuinely have independent directors whom we respect. Uh, we have a board retreat every year. I started it 17, 18 years Seems ago. Like I think uh, Jack will scrotton will experiment. Yes. <laughs> so we go for two days Very good. and uh, call someone to give a talk about the country or some sector we want to know about and then have our senior management also and come up with a strategy for the next year. So uh, independent board, values, very uh, innovative, technologically very up. Uh, and so now because we have seen like I was telling you, we have seen a lot of things have been written uh, in India right across the globe about the family businesses and still we are not able to find a solution and especially when you have uh, multiple I mean, uh, siblings but I think that the sibling rivalry also makes a big dent in the way that governance things happen but I think uh, it's very great and we really honor. We have, I have only one daughter <laughs> so <laughs> I can't get credit yeah, yeah. for managing sibling no, rivalry no, that no, I can't. So, I have two grandchildren right. let's see we <laughs> I brought up my own children my son died but uh, my own children and my grandchildren with the message that the business is open. You have to earn it. But you, and it's up to you whether right. you want to and you have to start from the very bottom. Right. And if you happen to be even, I'm not saying you can never be an executive person, but you have to earn it. That's it. Not because you are our grandson or mm -hmm. the son of my, or the granddaughter, not because of that. That That's is very important. Another thing I feel, I was just talking to a friend and a family owned company hired a professional to say now we want to make it professional but couldn't let go. They were interfering indirectly all the time. So it's that man enough. within a year left. Right. Now we may make some mistakes. I am not saying we are all angels, we never do anything wrong. but. Our MD has space to point out that what you did was wrong. I didn't like it. You directly spoke to someone and said something. Right. Uh, I can talk to people, but I can't give instruction. Right. I can't. That only is his prerogative. So we have a lot of open communication with our MD. So the family and the MD must have open and trust. Exactly. If I didn't trust and doubted every motive, uh, every move of his, he can't operate. And similarly, we can't st stay on this floor if every time we met someone, he said, now what did they do? <laughs> did they talk about me? So there has to be trust. Right. So I think our company believes in trust. So uh, from that perspective, ma'am, uh, is it good, like what you said sometime back, that it is good to promote internal talent to be on the top post then because you would have understood the value system, the culture, everything. You then know, so far we've been lucky. And I'm sure I hope yeah. we are able to keep but I'm sure your yeah. pipeline should be so yeah. thin. But we had senior people from other companies right. whom we carefully select. Mm -hmm. They've done very well in our company. So quite a few, we are learning to value some of the external people's values also. They may True. be a little different. Sometimes our systems are terrible. We are not known for systems. Mm -hmm. External people say, your systems are terrible. <laughs> Do something. You know, right. so it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. So too much inbreeding also. Right. So below MD, mm -hmm. we have had executives from other companies carefully selected. Some have succeeded, some have not. True. But we are learning the art of managing even external people. Sure. Otherwise, we'll be too ingrown. Ma'am, uh, just continuing one more uh, no, thought on your family businesses. Since you have had such a long corporate career, and then you have must have had a lot of uh, compulsions, a lot of uh, choices to be made and here and all that. So what are you looking up to, maybe one or two people in your own career, maybe a corporate executive, you know, either in India or globally. So what are you looking up to? You know, yeah. Who do I look up to? Yeah, maybe, of course me? one is your husband, that's not about but it. My husband, when he was there, yeah. 
I wasn't so active in business except right. in human resources. Right. So uh, I've had wonderful directors right. whom I've uh, mm -hmm. asked a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is one. My daughter and her husband, I think they have been a tremendous source of support to me. I can't praise them enough. When we were turning around, I was pretty difficult to handle, cranky, mm -hmm. uh, reactive, and they were very good. They understood. And uh, so I think my own uh, daughter and her husband and uh, our directors, because this is not something I can go and talk to outside right. people. Right. Uh, these are confidential things about exactly. our company. Exactly. So I think this much is more was more than enough. Exactly. Oh. Yeah, sure. I think, mm. and no, I'm just saying, mm. is, is there any, maybe somebody like, you uh, know, Jack Welch or let's say Sam Balton kind mm. of thing, what are you looking up to? Maybe we, what None of the corporate people are my heroes. Right. My hero is Gandhiji, wow. who doesn't help me with the corporate world. Right. But just, I don't, uh, frankly, no, no. I, now, I know he was a horrid man, but I just took a fascination for Steve Jobs. Whoa. I just loved his book right. and felt this man was a genius. Right. And being such a genius. He's an uh, Yeah, I would make allowance for some of his <laughs> very stupid <laughs> things. But he realized and on his deathbed, he's written beautifully right. that please don't sacrifice everything for success. You can hire people for making money for you, for running your business. You can't hire people to go and sleep on your behalf in the hospital. Exactly. You have to do it yourself. So take care of your health. Don't be unidimensional in following af after success. Have some other interests, games, philanthropy, do something else. Otherwise, you'll end up like a walk person that I am. Right. He himself is saying on his deathbed, but there's something I admire. I don't know what it is. He, uh, would I like to be like Steve Jobs? No, no, thank you. But his thoroughness, his meticulous. His father was a carpenter. So he always felt the rear side of a furniture should be as well finished as the front. So that's what he has done in all his Apple computer, on everything he touches. Everything has to be perfect. Something about him and the way that book was written fascinated And that's the first time ever that he allowed someone to write. Yes, yeah, that's, yes a book. that's right. He's a Robinson. director from Aspen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ma'am, so that's about the family and all that. Yeah. Now, coming back to the kind of legacy, of course the Max will go on for centuries, Hope I'm so. sure. Hope so. And uh, <laughs> you have such wonderful daughter and grandchildren. But the kind of legacy that you think, you know, it's not for you or me, but I think uh, People like Asia, we look up to somebody like you definitely. But somebody like you, we have a lot of uh, women leaders coming up in this country, especially in the last uh, five, ten years. And more so in some very interesting industry like banking. If you look at it, banking is full of yes, a lot much. of la ladies you know, running the show. And which you feel very happy because I think some of the, the biggest Indian bank, uh, the uh, SBI is first ever time, uh, Arundhati. Sure. And Excess Bank, uh, she got the best award yeah. for the being the best. Right. So she's wonderful. So I think so. I think yeah. they are definitely breaking the glass ceiling for sure. That is one. But what kind of things, you know, while you're in business, definitely you will be uh, overwhelmed by the kind of challenges that you have, the daunting challenges in terms of the business, the bottom lines, profit lines. But correct me if I'm wrong, ma'am, is that when you're looking at only the top line and bottom line, at some point, uh, maybe most of the time, people miss the lifeline. You're yeah, very right. Very beautifully said. So, so how do we ensure that we get that lifeline and somebody keeps on, like you said, you want to have a strong independent board and who actually, quote unquote, I mean maybe if I have to rephrase what you said, they act as a devil's advocate, they act as a conscience or maybe the, uh, what you say, the top board so that you can bounce off and they'll come back to you. So what kind of, you know, you know, how do you think people should preserve the legacy? So that you're not looking at just the balance sheet. Are you asking me about women or just in business? Anyone, anyone, especially anyone. for women, because yeah. I think you are definitely, mm. people can relate to me. For example, I'm yeah. sure you must have read this uh, um, Sheryl Sandberg of Lean In, of Facebook. I think she, in fact, uh, had a personal loss. At, uh, she lost her husband. But then I think the way she, she has come up 
Uh, sure. And she started a movement by herself that's leaning itself has become a movement, sure. right? Sure. So people look up to her. So I'm sure in India, yeah. and the moment I say, when he said uh, that uh, we're having, a, I jumped. I said, no, we're going. So yeah. I said, no, it's wonderful. It's uh, sure. humbling. Sure. So what kind of legacy yeah. do you think you know, people See, should leave? Uh, though I lost my husband and my son within 14 months, it's taught me a very important lesson that nobody in this life is forever. And I read three lines which I've internalized. Our stay on this earth short, our roles dispensable, and our impact inconsequential. Wow. You know, if I think as a chairperson, I am very great, I'm in for a shock. I'm not. And we all come and go. And once you internalize that, it's a Hindu philosophy. Life is a game, little game. One day you'll win, one day you'll lose. So you put in your best, but the results don't decide your happiness and your peace of mind. My meditation has helped me that your own equanimity and your relationships with people who matter. I'm not saying with the world. I may not have a good relationship, but people, my daughter, my son-in-law, my grandchildren, my few relations, my few friends are important to me, not just my business. So having that decided that I will spend time with them, not when they are dead and having all repentance, I should have done this, I should have done this. No should, no guilt. Uh, in life. So these are some of the things, if you remember, as you rightly said, you don't become, obs and sometimes men sacrifice a lot of their family and relationship and their health. My husband did. He was a workaholic and his hours were terrible. He would come home at 9, 30, 10 work on weekends. Of course, after his stroke, this became worse because he had to put in a lot of more effort to get the same results. So I think if your philosophy, if life is mm. different and money and position is not everything, they come and go, frankly. You know, today, if you are giving me respect because I'm well to do, it would be sad. Exactly. Because tomorrow, but I should earn that respect because I'm a human being who's conducted. Also, another legacy I would like, and that's important for my even selecting the CEO is, just now government has made it compulsory 2%, but Thermax has been giving for way before it was compulsory. Moment. <laughs> and from our personal wealth also, we give 30%. Yeah. So CSI is from the company, but we get so much that I think it's important. The best example is Azim Premji. Right. Nobody is meeting his. But in our small way, we also give. For me, that's also important. For my family legacy, that we give from our personal funds, you know? Exactly. So we get involved in, s we can't solve every problem, but at least one aspect of a problem, go deep into it, try and make some dent. I'm not saying it's fantastic or nothing, but little. For your own satisfaction also. Right. Uh, also, I feel knowing the, look, the way I live is th thousands of times above an average Indian. I mean, let's not mince our words. I go on holidays, I own property, I have enough. But there is a line somewhere which my husband, where to draw the line. And I can't be prescriptive. Each one must know where to draw. But our ostentation must come down. Exactly. I somehow feel in India, our lavish weddings, it's a bit insensitive. Right. I really feel. I mean, again, I'm not being holier than thou. Uh, I also spend, uh, that's all I would say. Exactly. Some, so in our company, one of the values we hold is we don't dine and wine and stay in five-star hotels. We have guest houses all simple guest house. We stay there. Very so true. we definitely downplay overdoing. Uh, exactly. Yeah, that, yeah. I think that that's a complete uh, evolved that, person, that, I would no, say. No, I don't know. Mm. I think it's been there with us exactly. for a long time. Exactly. So we won't attract someone 
who's very attached to five star culture he <laughs> won't uh, last in our company yeah, yeah right so ma'am i think lastly yeah. if you have to say something about maybe three qualities that you're looking for any ceo or any senior executive that you know you want to hire or anybody for that matter you should have these three qualities without which forget it you might be from in from different pedigree and what what would account to the three most important thing that everybody should have values okay. i would say values as i said not to let down any of the stakeholders okay that means compassion for the my employees also at the same time sometimes if you have had to take hard decisions mm -hmm. for the sake of popularity you will not dodge them i had to take the hardest decisions ask people to leave which is very tough, tough. but without which com this company would not have survived so values i would say care for the company ek attachment hona mangta if he is there because aaj yahan hu kal ne 10 paisa 10 percent jata hu so if there is no attachment and care for the company right. for its people right uh i don't think i could do i mean uh, deal with such a person and of course ability to lead my people show them the way uh, i think that's important he should be looked up to exactly. uh, people I mean, respect respect yeah i think with that we'll be hmm. through with and you know, thank you so much no not at all and i uh, wish that we rest of the world and definitely we would like to promote your philosophy to i think uh, this is wonderful uh, corporate philosophy that i think uh, we knew it but then definitely we want to take it to next level where thank you